He lacks emotions. Hi guys, hope you all are doing good. Your boy Al is here with Spice and Wolf episode 18 review so let's go. At first we see Lawrence visit the bar where he originally made the deal with Amani and notices Batos there. He asks Batos if he knows anyone who supplies pyrite. Batos is initially reluctant to help, but Lawrence explains that he needs assistance with Diana, knowing she has connections with alchemists who sell pyrite. Lawrence admits he wants the pyrite for profit but assures Batos that his reasons are fundamental. After Lawrence explains his situation, Batos understands and tells him the alchemists might have pyrite in stock. He suggests Lawrence visit Diana and share a specific phrase with her. This part shows that Lawrence sees everything from a merchant's perspective, which is making me wonder how he was raised, because a person can't have such a way of thinking under normal circumstances. We see Lawrence thank Batos for his help, and Batos asks him to repay the favor by sharing an old tale with him. Lawrence then travels to Diana's residence, where she welcomes him and mentions that another gentleman recently visited her. Lawrence requests pyrite from Diana, explaining that he needs it for his cargo and outlining his situation. Diana reveals that someone else has already asked to purchase pyrite from her on credit, but she's willing to sell it to Lawrence. She discloses how much the other buyer was willing to pay but, due to her policies, doesn't reveal their name. Diana agrees to negotiate with the other buyer and Lawrence suggests a meeting place for their deal. I would love to learn a bit more about Diana, because she is surrounded by many mysteries. I mean she is hiding from the church, she can control all the alchemists in the town, she seems to know everything ahead of time, and yet she acts like a normal lady who likes old tales. All these things are making me want to know more about her. Also I'm pretty sure the other person she was referring to is Amadi. Moving on we see that before leaving, Lawrence asks Diana if there are tales where humans and pagan gods become couples. Diana confirms such stories exist and promises to share more details in the future. Lawrence then visits Mark and Lant at Mark's shop, where Mark updates him on the challenges in the pyrite market and why it's difficult for buyers to sell their products. Mark reveals that he had Lant spread rumors that Lawrence is looking to buy pyrite. As they discuss their friendship, Lawrence's desperation to keep Hollow with him comes up. Mark informs Lawrence of the curse of traveling merchants, which refers to the difficulty merchants face in finding love. Lawrence reflects on Mark's words and recalls his previous argument with Hollow. The Mark part shows that Lawrence lacks the emotions to understand how friendship or friends work, because to him, every relationship is a give and take thing. Also it's kind of funny how Lawrence thought he and Hollow can't become a couple because she is a pagan god. Then we see that Lawrence believes he can finally give Hollow an answer to her questions. Mark then asks where Lawrence plans to sleep tonight. Lawrence requests some wheat sacks to sleep on, but Mark suggests he stay at his house instead. Lawrence declines the offer but agrees to share a drink with Mark. The next morning, Lawrence chats with Lant, who mentions that Mark hasn't shared many details about their plan. However, Lant promises to fulfill his role. Lawrence gives Lant money to buy bread and tells him he can keep the change, assuring him that he'll pay more once Lant completes his task. I hope Mark's words finally made Lawrence realize his true feelings for Hollow, and he will give her a proper answer, because it will be beyond pissing if he gives a dumb answer after the things that happened in this arc. At the end we see Lawrence attend a pyrite gathering and selling event while Mark informs Lant about the goals of both Lawrence and Amadi. Lawrence then spots Amadi with Hollow. Amadi greets Lawrence, gives him Rimmer gold coins, and asks him to count them and hand over the contract for the 500 Trini silver coins. Lawrence complies, and Kimerson's bell rings. I don't know whether it's just me or if Amadi's arrogance is really becoming annoying with each episode. He is literally acting like a dumb kid due to his infatuation and arrogance. Also in modern terms, Lawrence is basically betting his all in a stock exchange crash. Nevertheless, this episode showed how Lawrence struggles with understanding his emotions, and I loved it. Anyways thanks for watching everyone. If you like my video then check out some of my other videos. 
Also don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel or leave a comment if you want to say something. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram or check out my Facebook page. Links are given in the description. Until then, see ya.